well students it is a topic on the isolation of plant protoplasts under this we would learn how the plant protoplasts are being isolated from a plant cell and thereafter they are being purified and their viability is being tested protoplast of a cell may be defined as the cytoplasm bound by plasma membrane and carrying all necessary organelles and other elements within the cell in case of animal cell a cell may be defined as the protoplast as well but in case of plant cells since the cell wall is present the plant protoplast can be obtained only by removing cell wall by any one of the two mechanisms the mechanical and enzymatic in the year 1892 clarker isolated plant protoplast for the first time by plasmolyzing cells of stratites aloides this success was followed by other attempts with onion scales which were plasmolyzed in higher concentration of sugar and then the wall was removed cell wall was removed with the help of a sharp knife the released squeezed protoplasts were again brought into its normal condition that is the shape and size by dipping them into isotonic solution of the sucrose in case of enzymatic isolation of plant protoplast primarily gastric juice enzymes from a snail helix ponicia was attempted later on cocking in the year of 1960 attempted with crude enzyme preparations from a fungus mydothesium verrucaria to isolate plant protoplasts from tomato roots such uses of enzymes gradually took an improved form with the use of two major enzymes pectinase and cellulase in addition to these two enzymes some other enzymes like hemicellulase mesylase mesozyme pectolase pectinol kaylase ricylase etc are in use the use of enzyme for the purpose of isolation of cell protoplasts may be of two different types one is sequential and another one is direct in case of sequential method enzymes are being applied on cell sequentially one after another in case of direct all the necessary enzymes to remove cell wall are applied together simultaneously in this picture you can find the very first step of protoplast isolation from leaf the leaf tissue is being prepared by removing trichomes and lower epidermis in presence of polyvinyl pyrrolidone and the leaf tissue is being dissected after which 
they are dipped in the enzymes enzymes along with the dithiothreatol and then that preparation is kept in the water bath to increase enzyme solubility for a particular span of time this picture shows the dissected leaves are being treated with enzyme solution and thereafter they are being kept in a desiccator where from the air is being removed to facilitate isolation of plant protoplast the process of isolation is generally being done in dark by means of gentle rotation of the enzyme solution wherein the leaf tissues are being dipped and kept in a at a particular temperature this practice is being done for few hours in the next step the protoplast in the solution is being strained so that they can be separated from other cell debris and afterwards the enzyme protoplast solution is centrifuged for the purpose of collecting protoplasts separately while protoplasts are separated then for the purpose of removing enzymes the collected protoplasts are repeatedly washed with a solution comprised of calcium chloride along with the osmoticum and nutrient medium this practice is repeated for sometimes and for each time by centrifuging them for a certain period while isolating plant protoplast and culturing them the role of osmoticum is very much vital during the process of removing cell wall as soon as the cell wall is removed the tartar pressure from inside the cell may cause bursting out of the cell to get intact protoplast addition of an osmoticum in the enzymatic solution is very much necessary so the protoplast isolation solution is made of the enzymes osmoticum calcium chloride in distilled water generally the sugar alcohols like mannitol sorbitol and also some other compounds like magnesium sulfate are used as osmoticum the desirable isotonic concentration of this osmoticum is determined by cryoscopic osmometer in this picture you can see the isolated protoplasts which are very much globose in sh shape and of different dimensions this picture also shows 
some isolated plant protoplasts. After dipping plant tissues in enzymatic solution for the purpose of isolation, it is generally being kept for a longer time for few hours. The entire process is carried out in dark at a temperature around 25 degrees centigrade and an ideal pH of 5.6 to 6. Once plant protoplasts are released from cells, they are required to be made purified. That means free from undigested materials, burst out protoplasts, and also the enzyme. At the very first step of purifying protoplasts. The protoplasts isolated in the enzyme solutions are passed through a mesh made up of steel or nylon and having pore size around 100 micron. After straining that solution is centrifuged at a speed of 600 rpm for 5 minutes. The protoplasts are collected at the pellet and the supernatant containing enzyme and debris, cell debris is discarded. The protoplasts collected from the pellet are resuspended in a washing medium, which is comprised of osmoticum and also nutrient constituents. This washing is done repeatedly for several times by centrifuging the solution and collecting every time the protoplasts from the pellet. In course of purifying protoplasts, the removal of broken protoplast is also very much necessary. It is being done by different means. Some scientists used 20 to 40 percent sucrose solution to suspend the collected protoplasts after straining and then centrifuged at 350 rpm for three minutes. The intact protoplasts were collected from the top of the solution and the rest part was discarded. In the other practices, either fecal solution or some kind of density buffer is being used. Lymphoprep is a density buffer prepared by a Norway company. The constituents of which is sodium, diatriosoate, and polysaccharide. In this method, 0.5 to 3 ml of crude preparation of protoplast is layered on lymphoprep in centrifuge tube and spun at 50 to 200 G for 10 minutes. All debris settle at the bottom and the protoplasts are positioned in the interface of protoplast washing solution and lymphoprep. So the 
protoplasts, the intact protoplasts, which are lying, which are positioned at the very juncture part of these two solutions are collected carefully with the help of a pasture pipette. After isolating plant protoplasts and purifying them, the testing of their viability becomes very much necessary. The viability test may be carried out by different means, one of which is by using some dyes. Even in using dyes, The Indian ink may be used, after isolating plant protoplasts and purifying them, it is very much necessary to determine their viability. The viability test may be carried out by different means. In one means, some kind of dyes may be used. Indian ink is a dye which, after application, colors the dead protoplasts. while the viable protoplasts remain as such, taking no color inside. The reason is that the plasma membrane in case of the viable protoplast is functioning normally and is not allowing the dye to get inside. While the dead protoplasts are not having a normal plasma membrane, that is why the Indian ink can easily go inside and color the cytoplasm. Another dye, fluorescein diacetate, which is fluorescent in color, may be used. With the using of this dye, the viable protoplasts start glowing with the color of yellow green. The very principle of this color development is while the cells while the protoplasts, the viable protoplasts, uptake this particular dye, the dye after reaching inside the cell gets dissociated by the action of an enzyme esterase and a product fluorescein is produced. Once fluorescein is produced, it cannot come out from the cell. And this part of the dye starts getting deposited just beneath the plasma membrane and causes the yellow green glow. Since the viable protoplast, only the viable protoplast possessing esterase enzyme, 
which is otherwise absent in case of non viable protoplasts. The fluorescent color emitted by the cells indicates their viability. Since a dead protoplast doesn't have the normal esterase enzyme, it cannot dissociate the fluorescent diacetate to produce fluorescein and so no coloration can take place. There are a number of factors which may affect protoplast isolation and their viability. One of that is the concentration of osmoticum Another factor is the enzyme, whether it is to be used singly or multiple ones are to be used sequentially or in combination. Generally, the low enzyme concentration at low temperature and high pH for a short period of incubation has been proved to be most effective than any other contrasting ones. Ionic salts with osmoticum degrades enzymes, but they increase the stability of protoplasts. Some elements like I mean, some ions like calcium and magnesium, their presence in the isolation medium showed greater success in cell wall regeneration. This is in nutshell. The process of protoplast isolation and the precautions to be taken during the process and different factors which are responsible for the success of this practice.